This is Pence's first full-size electric truck. So we saw the vineyard version that you can see over there, which was launched in 2023. We saw it as a sort of um, prototype version in the in the summer 23. And the, the manufacturer made it really clear they need they're going to work towards. Uh, fully electric tractors. In November 23, we saw a pre-production version of this Agritechnica that was very much, this is this is a pre-production of what we could do. It uses the mechanical and the electrical underpinnings of a narrow machine, but it's a full-size tractor. This is the first time we've seen it in the UK. So, functionally, it's going to be the same as any other, any other tractor within the manufacturer's range. And if we look across to there, it is effectively a electrical powered version of that 211 Vario. If this machine, 80 kilowatts, so somewhere in the region of 90 horsepower, it's slightly less than the 211, but in, in operation the, with the beauty of electrical drive and how you can decide where power goes from the controller center of things, is that you're not going to use all of that 90 kilowatts, or sorry, 80 kilowatts, 90 horsepower, you're not going to use it all the time. So when you've got high demand for PTO, that will route the power there. When you've got high demand for drive, it'll route the power there. So it gives us the ability effectively to have less but more intelligent use of power. So functionally as a tractor, it's the same. We've three front linkage front and rear. The loader on it, so the Cargo 3X65, is actually the identical loader which is used over there. That's not a specific loader for an electric tractor. Hab, operator station, again, exactly the same. It's a Fent 1 system, so I've driven the vineyard unit. I haven't driven the wide one. But it's a Fender one system, it is identical to operate as a stamp machine. When we're thinking about being electric and conserving our battery power for our, our work, work like be it six, eight hours, whatever the, the duty cycle is, if we have a lower on resistance tyre, we don't use so much energy to push the tyre along. I also believe, and it was the same with the vineyard, I'm not certain this particular one is, but these tyres are made carbon neutral. There we go. Three chargers here. We've got 230 sync phase and 4 230 three phase charging. Um, anyone who has electric car will see that's identical. So it's the same charging infrastructure and it's the same standard charging infrastructure we would see on electric cars. Why the manufacturers use this? So the first question is its availability, so it's compatibility with other systems to charge. But also we have to think about where this track is going to be used. So big big battery tractor why why aren't we using a power socket and power influence now reasons for that is availability of influence on the market at the moment you can plug in there are some safety concerns about having a big unearthed electrical appliance um, but also we need to make things that are compatible with existing products if we've got the diesel power tractor that here you have a radio machine in your car effectively this tractor will work it doesn't need a special setup a lot of these machines all find themselves into effectively non-ag applications, so grounds care, municipals, ornamental plants. And actually when you start to break down where those businesses fit, you know, this tractor is unlikely to go it's having itself tied to a mower all day or go cultivating. It's going to do tasks which might be two or three hours in between charging. If it was on a horticultural nursery, it might pull a sprayer and that sprayer will be taking 30, 18, 90 minutes and then it will return to somewhere potentially with solar panels to charge it. But the other thing in some of those applications is this engine technology for struggle is that if those machines are spending their time basically running at idles, we're getting issues with exhaust system cleaning, we're getting issues with challenges on the machine. It's basically not being run hard. The beauty of electric machines is if the application is always idling, be it working around the nursery or mowing grass on a golf course, suddenly actually this machine is perfect for that. Um, and we saw that with the narrow machine. One of the, the first sort of customer interest on the narrow machine was from um, Norway for effectively initial applications. So Norway said we want I believe the number is in Oslo they had some 150 tractors that were being used. They all need to be electric, but suddenly we can have an electric tractor that could do mowing, brushing, snow clearing, and we can plug it into the mains. We can collect our green energy from, I don't know, a hydropower, and suddenly it becomes a very suitable solution. And I think, for me, I don't believe electric drive is the future for all vehicles. But an agriculture for a very long time has been focused on diesel drive, diesel drive from a two-cylinder two 12 horsepower mower 
the diesel drive to an 800 horsepower tractor. And some of those applications can be electro, some of those applications can be methane, some of those applications can be hydrogen. And we need to move from a single fuel solution to a multi-fuel mix based upon duty and application and how different users and different industries need to use their machinery. And that's, this is the start of that. In terms of where we see this machine going forward, so uh, we will have a review and looking at this in way more detail in Farmer's Garden online in right a couple of weeks. As I said, it's the first time we've seen it. It's the first time I've seen the full-size production machine. Um, but I think it's a really, a really exciting bit of technology that's happening and is available today.